So in this video I'm going to show how to mod the game Storm Chasers. I've been asked a couple of times how I mod things such as the size of the tornado or the probability of an EF5. So hopefully this short video will give you everything you need to get started. So the first tool you'll need is called DN Spy. So if you just Google it, go to the GitHub link. Then scroll down to where it says latest release. Then this first one here, the DN Spy Net 472. If you click that and download that, you, then all you do is extract all the files to a folder. Once you've got that, um, just create a shortcut on your desktop. So I just extracted it to my downloads folder. And you just need a shortcut to the file called dnspy.exe. Once you've got that, you should just be able to run it and open it, and you'll get uh, you won't get this straight away. Let me just close out of here. What you'll have to do is click File, Open, browse to the Storm Chasers folder, which if you've got Steam, you'll have to go here, so C, Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Storm Chasers, Storm Chasers Data, then Managed, and you want to open the Assembly C Sharp DLL file. Once that file is open, you'll want to open the C Sharp DLL file, this one here with the dash, then scroll all the way down to Tornado. So let's see a tornado and open that. So you should have these line numbers down the side. Uh, what you can do now is to change the size of the tornado. If you scroll down to the line, I think it was 1,420. No, 1,240. Let's see. Yeah, so I'm getting my numbers mixed up. So these are the values which are just how the tornado looks. So. Uh, this first number is to do with the um, radius of the damage. This is to do with the power of the tornado and how much damage it does. This is the the width of the tornado. That's a radius, so it's half the width in what I assume are meters. Uh, a few of these I didn't really change. Um, num four is um, the so when a tornado is starting to form, you'll see a large cloud forming on the ground. That's the size of that. Number 8 is the debris cloud radius. Number 11 is also the tornado width. And I don't think I modified anything else other than this, which is the precipitation rate. So I dialed that down a bit so you could actually get a better view of the tornadoes. Um, you could set it to zero if you want to have a totally clear view. If you want it more realistic, you could set that higher. So these are the values I've used. So you, when you open your file, it won't look like this. You'll have to set these values. So in the last few streams I've made, I've been experimenting, trying to find the best settings for a roughly third of a mile wide tornado. So if you just copy these numbers, so what you'll have to do to edit it is right click, click edit method, and then you'll have to edit all the values in here. So this will have to be 3,800, 400, 300. And if you just pause this video and copy these values uh, from here down to here. Once you've done that, hit Compile. Click File, Save Module. Now here we've got the three dots. Click here, and then just click Save, and it'll ask you to replace the file. Say Yes, and then click OK. So that make sure you don't have your game running while you're doing this. And then if you load up the game, you'll notice the EF5s are a lot bigger. After that, um, if you want to actually change the probability of an EF5, I'll explain how this section of code works. Let me just find it. Here it is on line 117. Uh, this shows you the probability of each of the categories. So how this works is it generates a random number between 0 and 10. And I think this number is like 9.7 or thereabouts um, for um, the default values. I've set this down to 1.5. So what it's doing in each of these cases is it generates a random number. If it's greater than the 9 point whatever, you'll get an EF5, uh, which means the lower the number, the higher the probability of it being spawned. So if you set that to 0, you'll always have an EF5. If you set it to, I guess, 10, you will you may not ever get an EF5, um, depending on exactly how this function works. And you can modify it to these values. So increasing the number will decrease the probability of getting that category. So if 
the number is not greater than any of these, then it just defaults to an AF0. So that's how you change the probability. And you change it in the exact same way. Just right click, edit method, change the value to whatever you want, hit compile, click file, save module, hit those three dots, and then overwrite your file. And then click OK. Then at that point, you should be able to play the game with your modified settings. So if you ever manage to break your game, so if you break the DLL file or if there's an update and you need to start fresh, what you do is if you open up Steam, go to your library, right click on the game, go to properties, then local files, then you click verify integrity of game files. It'll validate the files, I'm just going to cancel it here, uh, but what this does is it'll realize that the files be modified and it'll set it back to the default so if you ever need to start again because you've broken something or you're not happy with the results you can do that through Steam. Uh, I guess I'll end this video with a disclaimer uh, if you break the game any modifications you make are your responsibility if you break your game if you break your computer if your house burns down I take no responsibility for that uh, I'm just showing how I've modified the game and if you follow these instructions closely you should get good results and if you enjoyed this video, I'm going to be doing a lot of modding and storm chasers related videos. So if you're interested in that, then I encourage you to subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below.